In the previous video, we learned a simple formula that if y equals x to the n, then the derivative of y, which is called dy dx, is equal to n x to the n minus 1. And we went through several examples in the last video of how this works in practice. In this video, we're going to look at a similar case that is only slightly different. We're going to look at what happens if instead of being given y equals x to the n, we're instead given some multiple of x to the n. So if y is some multiple of x to the n, so where a is a real number and n is a natural number, as in the previous video. Well, we're going to deal with this situation in exactly the same way. So up above, when we're given y equals x to the n, what we do is we multiply by the power of x, and then we reduce the power of x by 1. In this case, we want to do exactly the same thing. We multiply by the power of x, and then we reduce the power of x by 1. So if y is equal to a times x to the n, then to get the derivative, dy dx, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. So here, let me write down what we already have. We have ax to the power of n, and now we want to multiply that by the power, so that's n, and then reduce the power by 1, down to n minus 1. So dy dx is going to be equal to n times a times x to the power of n minus 1. So we have essentially the same thing as we had before, where we multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. The only difference is now we're also multiplying by this number a. So here is our new and more complete formula, because you'll notice if a is equal to 1, in this case, then we'll end up with our first case. So if a is equal to 1, then we'll have 1 times x to the power of n, which is just x to the power of n. And then the derivative will be n times 1, which will just be n multiplied by x to the n minus 1. So if a is equal to 1 in this formula, then we'll end up with this formula. But if a is not equal to 1, then this formula will account for other cases. So like the last video, I want to go through several examples, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, and we don't have to deal with all of this algebra and formulas. We can see exactly how it works when we do it in practice. So say we're asked to differentiate the function y equals 3x squared. So in the previous video, we differentiated y equals x squared. And in this video, we're dealing with y equals 3x squared. So to differentiate, to find dy dx, what we want to do is we want to multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. So we've got our 3x squared. We want to multiply by the power, which is 2, and reduce the power by 1. So that's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6, times x to the power of 2 minus 1 is 1. So we don't need to write x to the power of 1 because that's the same thing as x. So we're given y equals 3x squared, and we found the derivative is 6x. So let's do another example. If we're given y equals 7x to the power of 4, and we're asked to find the derivative dy dx, then what we want to do is we have our 7x to the power of 4, and what we want to do is we want to multiply by the power, that's 4, and reduce the power by 1. So we're going to have 4 times 7 is 28. Multiply by x to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 3. So given y equals x to the power of 4, the derivative is 28x to the power of 3. So you'll see that this works pretty much the exact same way as it did in the last video. The only difference is in the last video we were using this formula because there was no number in front of x. And in this video all of our answers do have a number in front of x. So we're using a slightly different formula, but it works in exactly the same way. Because every time what we want to do is we want to multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. So let's do another example. So this time let's look at y equals 2x to the power of 6, 
and we want to calculate the derivative dy dx. Well, to do that, we've got 2x to the power of 6. We want to multiply by the power, that's 6, and then reduce the power by 1, which will leave us with 5. So that's 6 times 2, which is 12, times x to the power of 5. OK, next, let's say y is equal to 8x. Then what is dy dx? Well, now we want to multiply by the power, but x looks like it doesn't have a power. However, it does have a power, it's just not written down, because x is equal to x to the power of 1. So we don't normally write the 1 because we don't need it, but in this case it's helpful to see exactly what's happening. So we have 8x to the power of 1. And to differentiate, we multiply by the power, which is 1, and then reduce the power by 1. So that's going to be 1 times 8, which is 8, times x to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0. But any number to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so that's equal to 8 times 1, which is just equal to 8. Now the rule I'm using here, that x to the power of 0 is 1, can be found in your tables book on page 21 in the section about indices and logarithms. We'll see here we have a to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And this is just a rule of indices. It follows directly from this one of the previous rules. And we will cover it in more detail on a course about indices. But for the moment, it suffices to know that a to the power of 0 is equal to 1 for any value of a. And the same is true for x. So x to the power of 0 is always going to be equal to 1, regardless of the value of x. OK, moving on. Let's try y is equal to 14 times x to the power of 3. Well, then the derivative is given by multiplying by the power, that's 3, and reducing the power by 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2. Now we have 14 times 3, which is 42 times x squared. So asked to differentiate 14x cubed, we get the derivative 42x squared. OK, moving on to another example. Let's say y equals minus 5x to the power of 10. OK, so now the only difference with this one is we have a minus 5 instead of a 5, but it works the same way. So to get the derivative, we're going to multiply by the power. That's 10, and reduce the power by 1 down to 9. We're then going to have 10 multiplied by minus 5 to give us minus 50x to the power of 9. Next, let's try y equals 6x to the power of minus 2. So again, this one works exactly the same way. The only thing that makes it look different is the power is negative, but it still works the same way. So to calculate the derivative, which is called dy dx, we want to multiply by the power, which is minus 2. And then we want to reduce the power by 1. So minus 2 minus 1 gives us minus 3. So we have minus 2 times 6 gives us minus 12 times x to the power of minus 3. So in this video, We've seen how to calculate the derivative of something in the form ax to the power of n, and we've seen that we do it exactly the same way as we did before, where we multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. Just like before, when we multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. In the next video, we're going to look at what happens if we don't have an x term. So we have something like y equals some constant a. So this is if y equals 5, or y equals 7, or y equals 23, or any other number. What happens then? How do we calculate the derivative of that?